Hi, I'm Jeremiah Small, Principal and Technology Strategist at Soliant Consulting. Soliant went through the process of becoming a Stripe Consulting Partner because we've had consistently positive experiences with Stripe. Our customers, developers, our internal users, they all report remarkably positive experiences with Stripe. Payment links are a relatively new product from Stripe, and it could be argued that they're underutilized. I think some people hear Stripe payment link and it brings to mind Stripe payment, but that's a different thing. So if they already have some mental model of Stripe payments, they may move on. With payment links, your business can take payments and or sell subscriptions without additional standalone websites or applications. You can share these payment links an unlimited number of times in a variety of places, like from your website or in an email or on social media. Payment links support over 20 payment methods, including credit cards, debit cards, Apple Pay, Google Pay, etc. The payment link automatically matches your customer's preferred browser language for over 30 languages. Sometimes it can be easier to show than to tell. So here's a demonstration. The Stripe dashboard experience of creating a payment link includes an interactive preview of the end user experience. So it's kind of an ideal way to show off both sides of the coin. So I'm logged in with a test account and I'm on the home screen here. It's got no data because it's just a test environment. I'm going to click on payments, payment links. I want to show you what type of flexibility there is with payment links. Let me just give you a little tour of what's available on this page. So as far as type goes, you can pick from products or subscription versus uh, choose what customers pay, which is best for what they suggest, tipping donations or pay what you want, but can also be useful, I'll show you in a minute here, if you want to give customers a flexible way to pay invoices that you're sending out through some other means and you just want to allow them to pay an arbitrary amount. Let's start with products uh, or subscriptions. You have the option to define both the page that they see, which you get a little preview of over here on the right, uh, as well as the experience that they get after they make a successful payment. In both cases, you have the ability to toggle the responsive mode, so you get a chance to see what it looks like on a phone versus a computer. So again, we'll go back to the payment page, and this is what the experience will be like for the customer on the, comp on the phone. Uh, so you can go ahead in and define a product, uh, whether that's a, a subscription product or a physical product that you mail out, anything like that. So let's go with first just a physical product, so like sunglasses. I'm going to make that $12, a one-time payment. You can have some type of ID. Um, this is like if you're going to be tying these payments into uh, some other system and you have a limited number of products, this can be a super useful way to do it. So let's just go ahead and define the sunglasses. You can put a photo if you want. We will skip that for now and we'll go ahead and add product. Uh, you can decide if you want them to be allowed to adjust the quantity, in which case you would have update. And let's go ahead and add another product just to show what that's like. In this case, we'll put hat. Add hat as a new product. That's going to be $20. That's going to be a one-time payment, and this will be four, five, six. We could add a photo if we wanted as well. So now, let customers adjust the uh, quantity on that, and they can come in here and buy two hats, one hat. And so that would be the, the checkout experience. Now, if we were going to go in and do a subscription, uh, let's go ahead and delete these. We're going to say... Uh, basic plan and that's going to be $12 recurring and that's billing monthly. Uh, go ahead and give it an ID and then let's just for the sake of illustration here add a premium $50 a month recurring. Uh, now, if you wanted to have an annualized discount for these type of subscriptions, uh, you would be able to put in two more products that are on the yearly and have a, a commensurate price. So that's automatically going to set up a recurring payment. You have a thanks for subscribing message. 
and they would receive an invoice and an email after they pay. Um, you could choose to say don't show confirmation page and redirect to your own website. That's pretty neat. There are some uh, additional custom fields options. So you can click add custom fields. This gives you a chance to put in something like invoice number. Uh, you could have drop downs. You can define a bunch of things that you could make either optional or required when they submit when they're doing their checkout. Uh, you can support promo codes. You can have uh, support for tax IDs. Um, you can require address phone number. You can include free trials. A lot of really flexible options that you can do and define your products. The same will apply to let customers choose what they want to pay. So this is great for donation pages and stuff like that. But this can also be a way for businesses who are sending out invoices through another channel to go ahead and let their customers pay online. But you can do, for example, with a custom field, you can say uh, invoice number or invoice reference number, invoice reference number. Well, you, let's say they're paying more than one invoice, you can say numbers. Um, and then in this case, we'll mark it as optional. So now when we look over here, we say, we see this optional field that the customer can fill in. And so if they're paying invoices that you've sent them through this online portal, uh, you'll know what they're trying to pay and reference back to when you receive the payment. Uh, if this is relevant for your business, you can use a product from Stripe called Stripe Tax. Uh, you can see it's disabled in this test account right now, but you can go ahead and activate Stripe Tax to automatically calculate and collect the right amount of tax. And that's also compatible with payment links. Payment links also do support custom domains. So if you want to do something like pay.acme.com or that sort of thing, that is a compatible thing so that your link can be branded. As far as customizing the look and feel, you do also have some control over the way that the checkout page and the after payment page looks. Um, if you look on this info um, icon here next to the preview, there's a direct link that takes you over to the branding settings. And if you go over there, it takes you to another uh, area of your dashboard and you can do things like change the icon, upload a different logo, uh, change the brand color, um, mentioned before, but you can do custom domains. Um, and then it gives you a preview of the various different things in addition to the email receipts that get sent out. You can modify not only the look of the payment links, which we were just looking at, but also there's a customer portal for people to manage their own subscriptions, which is tied to this automatically. There is a invoice and a payment page, which again, you can look at in responsive mode. It will generate invoice PDFs if you want. You can manage the, the look and feel of your brand identity. And then as far as um, identity verification, if you're gonna utilize that, that also has the ability to uh, add some branding. So that's just a quick overview of basically the payment link section of the Stripe dashboard. I hope you found that useful. And um, if you have any questions about how to implement Stripe or Stripe payment links, please get in touch.